Yes guys, what's going on? Hashtag Shore here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, I've been saying this for so long over the last like week or two or whatever. Finally, I've got my 30 and 0 custom tactics video here for you guys. A lot of you guys have been requesting it down in the comments down below. And I thought, you know what? It is about time that I did one of these. Jesus Christ. It's been a while. And as you can see here, guys, these are the custom tactics for this 30 and 0 that I hit in weekend league last weekend where we finished sixth in the world, which is absolutely fantastic. Just quickly, if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for all the recent support at the moment. It's absolutely overwhelming. And uh, yeah, we're going to keep absolutely bashing out this YouTube. I know I say that a lot, but this time it's for real, especially now that we've got, you know, team of the season coming around pretty soon. And I'm going to be streaming loads on my Twitch as well. So make sure you guys drop my Twitch a follow. I'll leave that down below in the description. But without further ado, let's jump straight into the tactics because this is a custom tactics video and that's what you guys have come for. That's obviously. Now, briefly here, ladies and gentlemen, just before we get into it, this is my new team that I've just bought for this weekend league. Obviously, I just played in the E-Premier League. Had to buy a team for that, you know, with my icons and the Premier League players. Now I can go back to like the normal squad restriction players for the foot cups. So this is the team that I've gone with. And yeah, if you wonder why the chemistry is 98 and thinking, stick you on still, um, it's just because uh, I haven't actually played any games with it yet. So a few of these players, I've got the manager with the right chemistry uh, for the Portuguese link to give it to Renato and Cancelo, and then to give it to Hernandez as well. Everyone else will get 10 chemistry once the 10 games have been played, so that's why it's 98 chemistry. Just for you guys who are worrying, oh no, why is it not 100 chem? But anyway, it's not about the team. Obviously, the squad is absolutely unbelievable. So I'm buzzing to play with Team of the Year CR7 for the first time this weekend. Obviously, I've used Mbappe before. Anyway, that's enough talking from me. It's a very, very good squad. But what you guys are here to see is the tactics, not the bloody team. So let's get right into it, shall we? Custom tactics. What have you got for us, ladies and gentlemen? We'll start off here, guys, with the formations. Obviously, attacking, ultra-attacking, defensive, ultra-defensive. I do have it pretty much set out to sort of fit that exact meaning if that makes sense but attacking here which is 442 this is my main formation this is like what i use to start every single game normally obviously in the pro scene at the moment there's the five back thing going on but for right now if you know if someone starts a four back against me this is exactly what i'm playing to start off with so let's get right into it shall we now i don't want to long these tactics out stupidly for you guys because you know yeah i don't want to take the mick with anything so we're going to look at this page here realistically and let's look it's extremely extremely balanced literally defensive style balance we've got five five there for depth and width balance once again then the width and the players in box, five again, just five out of 10. Just very, very balanced. Very, very balanced tactic. My tactics for my starting formation have always been extremely balanced. And then obviously the corners and free kicks. I prefer to have it on two as opposed to three. Two is a better midpoint for me because I'm there like, I'd rather have a few more players back than risk the players forward. Because you can do that in other formations, etc. But to briefly explain this, it's just what I'm most comfortable with. And to be honest with your tactics, guys, I would say the other formations that I'm going to show you guys are probably where you might take a few more little tips from. Because obviously, this is sort of what I'm most comfortable playing in 4-4-2, which is kind of the current meta of the game at the moment. Or, you know, five at the back is obviously absolutely huge in the meta at the moment. But 4-4-2 is still doing pretty well. It's a pretty comfortable formation, very balanced formation, as we all know. 4-4-2 has been over like many FIFAs. It's been a formation that works for meta every single year. So I can't really explain too much about, you know, the 5 width, 5 depth, and the 5 width on offense, if that makes sense. It's just all very balanced. And that's the kind of the way I like it, is the best way I can describe it. Obviously, we can go into more detail about other stuff. That's the formation right there. That's how I obviously set it out in game. And with the player instructions, really not too much going on. I've got the strikers on comeback on defense because at the end of the day, you need the defensive support you can get on this game. Once somebody gets sort of past your central defensive midfielders, obviously it's very, very difficult to defend. So obviously trying to manual defend as much as possible, but having people back is obviously very nice. I have the same thing on my wingers as well. And on my CDMs, I've got them on stay back while attacking. Because to be honest, when I'm getting players forward, I like to obviously trigger runs a lot myself. And you know, L1s trigger a player's run or L1 and pass and, you know, send the player going. So that's what I tend to do with the player instructions there. Cancelo and then Hernandez, obviously, on stay back while attacking as well. That is just my very basic sort of go-to formation off the beginning of a game. The other formations are certainly what are more interesting, though. And we'll go next to defensive. Now, to be honest, this is probably the formation that I use the least out of all four of them, just because 43-1 has been, like, my go-to formation from, you know, FIFA 19 and FIFA 20. Obviously, this year, the meta has sort of shifted to 4-4-2, so it's kind of become, you know, that's my meta formation this year. However, I've got a 4-2-3-1 set up just in case sometimes for a bit of close in out game management where I maybe don't want to switch to a five back a four two three one is obviously just a little bit more defensively stable as you've got the two cdms who sit back and you've got sort of that central cam who can come in along with the wingers obviously you can get ronaldo back as well but yeah it's just that cam you're able to sort of pull him in to maybe you know block a pass 
a little bit more with a 4-2-3-1. But again, the tactics, very, very balanced still, you know. I've got these on, you know, to come back a little bit. You know, the players on boxes on four as opposed to five from the last one. The width is down a little bit and so is the depth and width here. But it's still on four. So we're still basically, you know, very, very balanced formation. But this is just what I like to switch to to close out a game a little bit more. But it's rare that I'll switch to it, I'll be honest. Because once we get to the next formation that we've got here, that sort of explains a bit more a formation that you might switch to if you're trying to close out a game that is for damn sure ladies and gents again on the instructions on this everybody is on comeback on defense and then stay back while attacking on the two cdms and the left back and the right back i know it all seems very defensive but it's obviously about being as manual as possible as well but the players don't just obviously all sit back the way that you'd want them to you know you still obviously have to do a lot of manual switching or people are just going to expose you doesn't really matter how many players you get behind the ball on this game it is important, and this is one thing I can say to you guys. You need to make sure you are trying to be manual. You know, if you just want to sit there with your CDMs trying to block a pass for a million years, good players will open you up. And that's a good tip I can give to you guys who are trying to improve at the game. You need to try and be a bit more aggressive with your defending. You know, grab players, try and push at the right times. You know, maybe mark passes at the right times. But that's what FIFA 21 and defending is about. It's that, that decision making on whether to push or whether to, you know, sit back and mark a pass, that type of thing. So they're the two sort of, you know, more balanced formations that I'll be using, guys. Obviously, like I said, the attacking the 4-4-2 is the main formation that I would tend to use. Now, this is the formation that is very, very interesting because this at the moment is quite a current meta in the game. Five at the back. Now, this formation, I've got it on, it is 5-2-1-2. However, a lot of people are using 5-3-2 as well. Just for the players I've got at the moment, I might switch to a 5-3-2, but 5-2-1-2 works for me at the moment because I like to have Neymar as the cam and then obviously... And Mbappe and Ronaldo as the strikers are obviously absolutely unbelievable. And then obviously you got the two CDMs and then the five at the back behind it. So it's a very balanced formation. But yeah, guys, this has become sort of the meta in the game at the moment. Obviously, because of all the through balls in FIFA 21, which obviously we know is one of the main key aspects of this game. You know, you guys, we've all marked through balls in this game. We've all played against through balls. We've all conceded through balls. That's for damn sure. And we've all probably scored through balls on this game because they're absolutely unbelievable. Now, one thing a five back does, and obviously I hate to say this because I don't want to be someone that, you know, eggs on five back because I'll be honest, from a personal opinion, I absolutely hate five back. I despise playing it. I despise playing against it and I don't really like playing with it either. You know, I can win with it. And like when I switch to it against pros, you know, I feel fine in it and it feel like, but I don't really like enjoy playing it. You know, it's not the same as, you know, playing a four back. You know, it's a little bit more fun in a four back. The game's a little bit more open, a few more goals. Five backs, obviously very, very defensive. And what it gives you as well is gives you that leeway with the through balls because you've got so many people at the back. It's way harder for someone to thread a through ball past you on this game. So, you know, I would say, you know, if you're struggling with through balls, switching to fireback is obviously a good thing, but I don't enjoy playing against it. That is for damn sure it's annoying. And not even so much for the through balls, just more for the way that some people tend to play in a five back is very, very frustrating. But you know the term, don't hate the player, hate the game. That is simply just very true in this situation. People are obviously well within their rights to use fireback. And, you know, some people have turned it into a very sort of attacking formation in a way, especially with the fullbacks. That is one thing to comment on here. Now with the tactics, again, pretty balanced. Uh, the free kicks and corners again on two. Now with this formation, say I'm proper switching to this in order to proper close out a game. Then in game, I might switch a few of these. You know, I might turn a few of these lower, you know, players in box and, you know, corners and free kicks down to that. However, if I'm switching to it normally in a game, because, you know, let's say I'm playing against a pro and he's using a five back as well. This is sort of what I'll use it on. Because again, I like quite balanced tactics to use in the game. And this is what I find works for me. And it's definitely worth saying to you guys, you might not want to copy all these tactics, you know, absolutely to the T. I'm just trying to give you guys some ideas of potentially what to use and what works for me and what doesn't. Like I said, balance tactics with the depth and width for me, to be honest, is what works the best. But like I was saying a minute ago, with the fullbacks in five at the back, they obviously give you another option running forward. And if someone hasn't switched to a five back against you, how wide these wingers get is absolutely crazy, these wing backs. And they just give you such an option. They stretch out your opponent so badly. You can obviously bait it as well. You can make a run with your right wing back and your left wing back push forward with them, make it look like you're going to pass to them with one of your strikers, then, you know, you might turn and do a skill move, etc. Because they might have gone to mark that pass. If they don't go to mark that pass, you play the pass out wide. It's pretty simple how it works out. It's very annoying to play against, which is why a lot of the time you guys will see in games, if you switch to a five back, a lot of the time your opponent might, or to be honest, in this current era, they're probably already using it, let's be honest. Again, the tactics are pretty defensive in the player instructions. I only have the strikers not on comeback. But to be honest, in-game, if I'm trying to close out a game or whatever, I might pause it, you know, and put the strikers on comeback on defense. Just depends on what the current situation is within the game. But I think in a five-back, we've got enough players back, if you know what I'm saying. Now, with the fullbacks as well, I still put them on stay-back while attacking as well. 
because I don't want to get caught out too much with the fullbacks being too high up. Obviously, you can trigger the runs yourself using L1, so I just tend to keep them on stay back while attacking because I can do that manually, if that makes sense, ladies and gentlemen. But that is the sort of defensive formation. Like I said, I might switch that in game, you know, and pull through with the tactics back. But let's be honest, five back is just the current meta of the game at the moment. It's absolutely bloody annoying. <laughs> and finally, ladies and gents, I believe what a Boras quote of this is, is the kitchen sink, I want to say. Uh, if I'm not quoting Boras there, um, just a bit embarrassing, really. But what an absolute quality guy. But anyway, let's move into this. So we've got defensive style, constant pressure here. You know, this is just kitchen sink. This is absolutely flying at your opponent. This is, you know, you're down two goals. This is actually, in my most recent weekend league video I uploaded, I was 2-0 down like 82nd minute. One of them games where like, you know, you've had quite a few shots, but you just haven't got that goal. You know, it's like that last shot every time. She gets blocked or it's a save, etc. This is what I switched to and this is uh, what got me the win. So constant pressure. You know, the width and the depth very high. Obviously, having the width high is nice because you can obviously stretch out your opponent a lot more. You know, if they're compact, almost like an overload ball side type thing. Obviously, don't switch to overload ball side because it absolutely kills your defender's stamina. But you know what I mean? They still might have their width on very low. Stretching them, you know, being out wide in this game is still very, very good because, you know, cutbacks, etc. are always going to be very, very strong in FIFA and very difficult for your opponent to defend. And, you know, we've got this just flying. Players in box on eight, corners on four free kicks on four, etc. You guys get the picture here. We're absolutely sending man forward to try and cut the opponent open. I don't know what I was going with with that sort of flow of words there. I think I tried to think of a joke and it didn't really work. Anyway, but yeah, the constant pressure in this game is very, very, very powerful. And what it allows you to do is just your team obviously starts flying. Now, obviously with this formation, guys, you've got to expect like, if your opponent gets out of this, which they can, you know, with a good bit of passing, etc., you are going to be left quite exposed. But at this point, we know this with this formation, ladies and gents. This is the risk that you've just got to take. If you don't do this, you know, you're going to regret saying, oh, you know, if I'd have put the team on full press and I'd have gone for it, maybe I would have got the comeback, etc. So, you know, you've got to go for it in a game of FIFA. We all understand that. So as you can see here, this is how it sort of lines up and the players are absolutely flying forward, I'll be honest. We've got the center mids on get forward as well. We're just trying to absolutely throw men forward, left, right, center, forward, back. Uh, yeah, carry the two. Just be quiet, Alec. It is quite early in the morning right now that I'm recording this, so it's probably why I'm chatting. What well, seems like a load of breeze, but I hope it's making some sort of sense to you guys. But yeah, the 3 4 1 2, very, very good formation. Very, very similar to the 3 5 2, to be honest. But yeah, it just allows you to sort of get forward on your opponent very, very well and sort of, you know, trap them pretty well, I'll be honest. Because obviously, the left mid and the right mid in this, it's a little bit like a five back. Obviously, they're just they're just a little bit further forward for you. So, like, they're a good mix of going forward and back, if that makes sense. And then long ball as well to explain that. Basically, it just means your players are going to be further forward especially when your keeper takes a goal kick for example all your players are going to be far forward straight away so as long as you take that goal kick properly and you get it forward all your players are sort of already up there if that makes sense and long ball as well considering we've got our width so high the wingers are going to be pushed up like that properly as well so it's really just going to stretch your opponent and make it very difficult for them to mark all of your players if that makes sense but yeah long story short with all these tactics guys you know obviously you guys will have seen enough custom tactics videos by this point to know little details etc but the main things i can sort of point out from this video is obviously we know that the meta in this game at the moment is very much through balls very much that small bridge skill move up front that people are using but tactics wise you know through balls one thing that counters it very very well is the five at the back as much as i hate to say that it's very very true i feel like it's quite common knowledge probably anyway but for you guys who maybe don't know that that is definitely a main point that i would say but yeah 442 for me personally quite a balanced 442 is what i enjoy playing the most however switching to these other formations depending on you know needing to close out a game or depending on needing a late goal or two late goals etc to try and chase a game is what we switch to here it's all dependent on the situation ladies and gents but like i said at the beginning of this video it all depends on what works for you and what you enjoy as well definitely give some of these tactics to try see if you like them see if you don't like them little things about them etc but a lot of you guys have been asking for this so this is everything i've got to give if that makes sense but i hope that was helpful to you guys i hope that sort of explained a few things about the game and sort of what i think with tactics etc stuff like that but i'll go back to the point that i'll say again but you need to try and be manual in defense i know it's always very very easy to want to grab cdms and you know mark a pass all the time you know like Kante is a player that springs to mind because he's, you know, he's absolutely unbelievable the way he just gets around the pitch. But a lot of weekend league players, what they tend to do is they'll grab Kante, CDM, and they'll just hold him in front of the strikers and just pray that, you know, the person playing against them, you know, gets impatient and tries to ping a pass into the striker's feet. You don't want to defend like that. No matter what with these tactics, ladies and gents, you want to try and be as manual as possible in defense. Obviously not to the point where you're pulling out players stupidly to the point where people are going to get in. And it is hard to work a press. It is hard and it is something that takes a lot of skill and takes a lot of practice as well, I would say. But that's something that you guys 
can work towards if that makes sense. But I hope that video was helpful to you guys. If it was, make sure to drop a like and also subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you guys who've stuck this long and made it through the tactics video. I've got some weekend challenges that I'm planning on doing on my PS account. I'll be live on Twitch this weekend. I'm not sure when this video exactly is going up. Might be on the Friday night, might be on the Saturday. I'm not 100% sure yet, but whenever you're seeing this, I will be live over the weekend and over the coming weeks loads for loads of weekend league action obviously on xbox i'm going to play still with my main team because i still need the coins for qualifiers etc however on ps we're going to try and have a bit more fun try and do some weekend league challenges i've got a challenge in mind for this weekend so we'll see how that goes you guys have to wait and see i'll get that uploaded on youtube as well but thank you guys for all watching the video and i will see you all on the next one have a quality day guys